The polariscope is a simple instrument that can be quickly used to test the double refraction of transparent and some translucent gem materials. It can be used with gem materials in almost any form, whether rough, faceted, or carved. It can often also be used with set stones, strung beads, or several unset stones at once. The construction of a polariscope. The polariscope consists of two polarizing filters. The upper one is called the analyzer, and the lower one is called the polarizer. The lower filter is fixed, and usually a rotatable glass table is set above it. Limitations in use. Before testing materials in the polariscope, always make sure that the two polarizing filters are set in the crossed position. Make sure the gem is clean and has sufficient transparency, at least in part, to allow some light to pass through it. The polariscope is best used in an area shielded from surrounding light. Rotate the material in all directions. This means that a faceted stone resting on its table facet must be rotated on this facet and then also rotated in various other orientations to avoid missing optical information. From the observations, the following information can be derived. Optical character, isotropic or anisotropic nature, microcrystalline or polycrystalline nature, double refractive aggregate strains, anomalous double refraction, isotropic stones, singly refractive. There will be very little light visible because the polarized light from the polarizer passes through the sample without being changed by it and is then blocked by the analyzer. The sample will remain in the same dark shade throughout 360 degrees rotation, and such a material is called isotropic or singly refractive and belongs to the non-crystalline, examples, glass, amber, or cubic crystal system, examples, spinel, diamond. Anisotropic stones, doubly refractive. During 360 degrees rotation, if the sample changes its shade from light to dark eight times, then the stone is called anisotropic or doubly refractive. The reason for this is that light entering the stone is spilled into two rays that are plane polarized along two planes perpendicular to each other. When the table is rotated with the stone in one position, the plane of one of those rays becomes parallel with that of the analyzer, and hence light emerges from the top. Whereas at 45O after appearing light, the polarization planes of none of those two rays become parallel with the analyzer, and hence no light appears. Therefore, the stone will appear four times lighter and four times darker during a 360 degree rotation. Double refractive aggregates. In some transparent to translucent gemstones, during their 360 O rotation on the polariscope, they will appear in a lighter shade throughout, and such gemstones are called double refractive aggregates. This is because such materials consist of randomly oriented small anisotropic crystals or crystal fibers, and some of these will always produce polarized rays, the planes of which are parallel with those of the analyzer. Hence, at each position, light passes through the analyzer and appears as light. Microcrystalline, examples, agate, chrysoprase, and polycrystalline, examples, jadeite and nephrite, gemstones behave in this manner. The same effect can sometimes be produced by materials that contain a series of thin plates formed by repeated twinning, lamella. Anomalous double refraction. Some materials, when tested on the polariscope, show dark curved bands moving across the sample as it is rotated, example, glass. In some cases, light appears through the dark shade in cross-hatched form, example, synthetic spinel. This is called anomalous double refraction and is due to internal stresses in the material. The effect seen in synthetic spinel is described as tabby extinction. In extreme cases of anomalous double refraction, the stone appears doubly refractive, example, almondine garnet, and such a phenomenon is called pseudo double refraction, and stones are then called pseudo refractive stones. The conoscope. The conoscope is a polariscope fitted with a strongly converging lens. The conoscope can further narrow down the identification by distinguishing the uniaxial or biaxial character of the anisotropic gemstones. When testing a stone on the conoscope, it should be held manually, 
just below the lens, and slowly rotated until concentric colored bands intersected by dark cross arms or brushes appear. The dark brushes are called isogyres. This appearance is called an interference figure and is caused by the interaction between the optic axis of the stone, which is in line with the direction of viewing, and the strongly convergent polarized light. However, most often, various modified forms of interference figures can be seen. The interference figures are not always visible, and it is advisable to rotate and place the converging lens into place when colored bands are visible during the test on a polariscope and the irregularly placed color bands take the form of an interference figure. One special type of uniaxial interference figure can be seen when quartz is examined, and this figure is called a bull's eye. Therefore, the only stone whose identification can be confirmed with the coniscope is quartz. Thank you for watching the video. Join with the Gemological Institute of Ceylon for more knowledge and practical sessions. Contact us plus 94 769 369 369. We are available on WhatsApp. Visit us www.gisalon.com.